Hey everybody, Mike Toy, Bonsai Boise. Look at this beast of a tree. This is a ficus benjamina. I found this on Facebook Marketplace for a hundred bucks. Just an estate sale and they couldn't get rid of it and they were moving, so I swooped in and took it for a hundred bucks. Um, look at this trunk. Massive. So, let me give you a little spin here. So that's it. So today, what I'm gonna do is chop this thing way back and we're gonna get a, a better look at the structure. I think it's gonna be kind of a multi-trunk clump style when I finally get down there. And then decide between either turning this into a bonsai tree, yes, it is possible, or converting it into kind of like a, something between a bonsai tree and a house plant. Right now it's just a house plant, big overgrown house plant. But before we dive in, let's take a sneak peek closer look here. See how big that is. So that's clearly two trunks that have fused. It's hard to get a real good look until we start cutting, but I just want to take a pre-look. A lot of dead branches and die back in there and we'll attack. Got some cool nabari, although some of these I fear are those big ficus kind of potato roots. A lot of good potential. Don't know about the soil. Looks like just typical kind of organic peat moss stuff. So that's a, a pre look at it. Let's get to chopping. Uh, while I'm hacking away at this, I'll, I'll point out that a lot of these bigger branches and trunks that I'm cutting, I'm going to end up using as cuttings. Not that I need more ficus benjamina cuttings, because believe me, I don't. But I end up making fusions out of them. Stay tuned to the end of this video and I'll show you kind of how I do that. I mean, making cuttings is not rocket science or anything. You can just put it in a bottle of water and wait for it to root and then plant it in soil. But if you want to do fusions, um, you can do that and then just bind a bunch of them together. But I, I've done quite a few of them, some successfully, some not. And so I've kind of developed some good techniques on rooting successfully, um, good ways to get them to fuse together um, and, you know, how to store them and just, just a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that I'd like to share. So stay tuned to the end to see my uh, method for doing that. I'm gonna show an example of kind of what I'm doing here. So as I'm going through, it would be easy just to hack away at it without looking. But what I, I'm trying to make sure of is that as I chop it down further, that there is some growth below where I'm cutting. So for example, before I just cut here, I want to look below, follow this down, make sure. And it's confusing because you got this, which is actually coming from somewhere else. So you got to really be paying attention. So, you know, you follow it through and then it turns out, yes, there is some growth. So I'm safe to make a cut right there because a ficus benjamina typically won't back bud. They can, but the odds are low and it's, they're kind of finicky about it. So as you're cutting, before you make a big cut, just make sure that there's some growth below the cut to make sure that the whole entire trunk or branch doesn't die off. So that's kind of what I'm doing there. But you can see, sometimes it's easier said than done. It's quite a jungly mess. So I'm gonna keep hacking away at it though.
All right, let's take a quick assessment here of the situation. So as you can see, I've got it hacked back quite a bit. Still got some long leggy branches to go. That's a bunch of the carnage. Now back to this. So lots of big trunks in there. As I chop back, I just take it down to where there's more growth and then probably do just another round of that once I get it chopped back enough. Some of these are proving somewhat challenging. This one here, for example. <clears throat> Can't find any other growth on this one. That's dead. But then it fuses down to right there. That's it. And it fuses in with that trunk. So I might still be able to get away with taking it back, but there's just no other growth. So I, th I think if I take it back, I just have to take it all the way back. That little rock got wedged in there at some point. Now it won't come out. Funny. Anyways, still kind of a mess. So I'm just uh, gonna keep going through it here, taking it back as far as I can, and then we'll take another assessment from there. So I'll take a step back. There it is. Let's keep going. All right, so here it is after I chopped it way back. And I, I realize how much foliage that is. You know, probably 90 something percent. But I'm also pretty confident it's gonna bounce back. I think what's gonna happen is here in a couple of weeks, you're gonna see back budding all over this thing, probably. Uh, I think that's it for tonight. I still have to find a pot that I'm gonna repot this into. I, haven't, I don't have one yet. That's gonna be a pretty big job, getting it out of this old dirt and, you know, <laughs> I, I guess I, I don't know what I'm dealing with quite yet. I know the lady I got it from said she had it for 15 years, so I'm guessing it's been in there for at least 15 years. But uh, that's where we're at. It's not pretty at the moment. It's gonna take more refinement I just want to see it bounce back from what I did so far, and then we can go in and make some better selections. The goal today was just to get it trimmed down as short as possible, um, safely. And so that's what I did. So a lot of potential with this kind of dirty old thing. Only time will tell. All right, so I've been letting these cuttings soak in a jug of water for a couple of days. It's always a good idea to do that. I have had success, by the way, just taking a cutting and putting it straight into soil. If you do it at the right time of year and conditions are right and, you know, the magic fairies bless the, the cutting to root, then it might. But if you soak it in water first, you'll be better off. So the first thing I'm going to do here, since I'm going to try to fuse these together... So I'm going to try to make these trunks straight and flush as I can. So I'm just going through and I'm cutting off any little knobs and sticks and dieback branches and all that kind of stuff. Um, it took me a while to figure out what seems really obvious now, which is the more surface contact you have, the faster it will fuse together. Um, my, my first one I ever tried, I braided them, and you see that in stores a lot where they braid them together. Maybe it looks cool, maybe that's your thing. 
but it will take a long time for that to look like one individual fat big trunk. It will always have that little braided look for years and years and years. But if you can get a lot of surface contact, you'll, you'll be better off. It will fuse faster and more complete. So after I do that, depending on how many cuttings you're working with, it's kind of like <laughs> putting a jigsaw puzzle together a little bit to find the branches that all curve in like the little subtle ways to fit together. And you want to do it so that eventually the branches that are sticking out are sticking out in places you want them to stick out. So that think long term, think of it as one individual tree down the road, and maybe that'll help you determine it. That way you don't put three big branches all on one side and none on the other side. You get the idea. So I am fortunately working with several cuttings here, so I have a lot of options. But then you just find a few that sort of fit together and you can do as many as you're comfortable with. I think in this example, I'm doing three or four. And then here in a second, I'll show you a couple other ways. Once you get them in a place that you're happy with, there are many ways you can bind them together. And I've tried several. I've tried string, rubber bands, wire, electrical tape, Teflon tape, plumber's tape. In this particular case, I'm going to start with rubber bands. And the reason is that it, there's, I'm going to put them back in water. So that should sort of preserve the properties of the rubber band. Previously, I've tried rubber bands and then putting them outside and the sun kind of dries them out and they don't really work that well. But in this case, I think it'll work perfect. And they're easy and cheap. So I think overall, plumber's tape is actually the best thing you can use. But it's a little trickier. You know, you got to hold one spot. And, so that's why I'm going for rubber bands. From there, I'm just going to make some flush cuts along the bottom. It'll make my life easier later on when they root. And then I just put them back in water. Here's another one. And this is something I've been doing lately. Those little cracks in between the big trunks, I'll take smaller cuttings and fill in those big cracks. I find that that works really well. So you're just basically going back to that first principle of, you know, surface contact. You're filling in those gaps to give it more surface contact. So this big long thing, I got this one giant branch that's kind of like awkward. Trace it down to a different smaller branch down there and I get rid of it. Just like that. And then look at this beast. I'm most excited about this one. It's probably the most ambitious fusion cutting I've ever tried to put together. But these were three of the thickest branches that I cut off of this tree. And along with a whole bunch of supporting smaller branches to fill in some gaps. So I'm really hoping that this one pulls through. Because uh, if so, it'll be quite the monster. Look at that. Excited for that one. So those are some tricks that I do for cuttings. From there, I use the old clear plastic bag trick. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll kind of know that this is something I do a lot. It works well with rehabbing trees, growing aerial roots. It's, it's like a little cheap mini greenhouse. So works really well for cuttings. Then put it next to a window. Oh yeah, spray some water in there. They like it human. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two next week.